There's nothing to be, nothing to see, nothing to do. When we find our mind wandering, we just come back to the comfort of the breath. Allow a little movement now. So a little wiggle the fingers and the toes. And it's almost like we're restarting our day. So we give ourselves a little nudge to shift out of this stillness. Give your hips a little sway, a little side to side, kind of squeezing almost a little into the bum cheek so you can feel it extending and lifting just a little. You can maybe even point out of your toes. Just a tiny little shift. When you're ready, you're gonna gently guide your feet up onto the mat. And just one more time, we'll feel the hips widen, the shoulders, the back. And we're just going to turn over onto our belly. So we can just scoot our hips over to the side, shift your arm out, and then roll yourself gently there. And just take your time to root down onto the forehead. So bring your hands like a sandwich and just give your hips a little shake side to side. Now from here, just lift your head to look at the front edge of your mat and bring your hands so that they're about as wide as your mat. Feel again, the shoulders relax down. So maybe the pinkies are at the edges of your mat here. Now we're just gonna very lightly guide our belly button in and we're gonna softly push with the hands to lift the chest, look forward. Remember, we're always lengthening. So let's lower down again. Nothing intense here. Relax, tuck your belly just a little bit. Feel a little reach out of your toes as you lift your chest. And relax. Now this time we're gonna come up to stay. So tuck your belly, lift, and just bring your elbows in. And as you kind of tuck your elbows in, take a look down, kind of tuck them in under the shoulders there, hands out forward, and then looking forward. And as you do that, you're gonna to start to extend up through the crown of your head, just very lightly guiding your shoulders back. And we're pushing with our fingerprints as we always do. So our hips are still thinking of wide on our mat here. Deep breath, we're always lengthening, right? To get a little bit of a reach there. Now add more with your toes, so let them reach away from you as well. And just very lightly guide one leg up. Don't worry about height. Lower that down and try the other one. Squeeze it up. Yeah, don't worry about height. Lower it down. Tuck your belly button back inside. Let's try it again. Lift, squeeze through the tush. Lower, tuck your belly. Lift. Once you get to there, slide your elbows wide to the side. Go back how we started. Hands under the forehead. Relax. Maybe sway your hips now that you're on your belly here. Just finding the breath, noticing the sensations that woke up with that. So it's a great way of extending our back and strengthening the glutes to be able to lengthen out of our lumbar area. So we're gonna do that one more time. So when you're ready, slide your hands about as wide as your mat. Tuck your belly, lift your chest. Bring your elbows in. They might stay out a little bit, just double check. We wanna to try to find as much of that straight line as possible. And then just a little bit of a chest forward, just a little bit of a reach up. The belly lightly guided in as we lengthen out of our leg. And then as you're ready, one leg comes up. Reach from that leg. Try the other one, guide it up. Noticing the sensations that are awakening in our back. Let's try it again, squeeze. 
Keeping our fingerprints guiding, our shoulders widen. Yeah, squeeze, lower, and then fully lower. Bring the hands back in, a little shake out of those hips again. And then when you're ready, bringing one arm up beside the ear, we're gonna roll ourselves back onto our back again. Scoot it in. Apologize if you've ever been doing all your flipping around to keep yourself facing the screen. Take your opportunity to relax again once you're there, grounding with those feet, those hips, those shoulders again. Where's the breath here? What are we noticing? What's showing up here in the lower back? Maybe adding just a little bit of an extra press of our lower belly and our lower back towards the ground just to keep that space. Now open your feet as wide as your mat and then bring your arms out as wide as those shoulders, stretch it out to the side. Of course, we're gonna meet ourselves with a nice good inhale. And then as we exhale, let's drop our legs over towards the right. Now, as they root here, we're gonna take that left knee and we're gonna slide it up on top of the right. As you are ready, you're gonna lengthen by looking towards the ceiling, relax your shoulders, and then exhale, see about looking to the opposite hand. We can feel sensations awakening in the body, noticing how the shoulders feel as they broaden out with each breath. The shoulders relax at the same time. Maybe you might benefit from having a block in between the knees, finding any kind of pull from the top hip, maybe underneath both of the knees. Remember, yoga isn't about torturing. It's about opening yourself to this communication. So maybe creating some extra lift gives you that freedom. Never hesitant to let the shoulders relax more. Noticing the breath as it goes through this twist, cleansing our body here. As we look towards the ceiling, we're gonna then wait for the inhale. Sweep your left leg out on your mat and just draw the knees up slow. Let them kiss together at the center. Relax your shoulders. Let's even bring those arms down a little bit. Feel the shoulders come down just like those arms did and then very slow, bring your knees, but keep them wide, bring them towards your arms. So you can stick them into your armpit. Add a little bit of a movement there. Just observe. Again, the shoulders are keeping that connection down. Those hips are trying to do the same. We'll bring our feet once again as wide as the mat, letting the knees keep that space as well. Arms open, inhale. As you're ready, exhale, drawing our legs now to the left. Then maybe sliding that top knee up, maybe stacking the knees. Maybe they're still a little staggered. We have our Support, whether it's an actual yoga block or a pillow or a blanket. Whatever could give you a little support in space. The shoulders are relaxed. Let's see if we can't look the opposite way on our knees. We're here cleansing and releasing the body. So notice, have you? Got yourself into it so you feel like you can't fully let an exhale go. Do you feel you could benefit from creating a bit more space within this pose to calm more?
Gently guiding up towards the ceiling. Be present for each of those moves. Then as you're ready, start to draw that leg out, bringing the knees back in. Shifting, shoulders relaxing. We're still breathing all the way down to the toes. We're feeling it spreading through the hips, the shoulders. Let's keep that idea as we can get one knee towards the chest. Draw them out wide to the side like you're sticking them into your arms there. Now with this little movement, start to feel again, just like when we had our feet on the floor, can we feel the far edges of our hips grounding, the far edges of our shoulders grounding. We're gonna take the elbows and bring them inside, reaching down now for the feet. Flex your toes, pull the heels out, feel the shoulders again. Can they widen towards the mat? The top of the belly keeps our hips guiding down. Take another breath here. Let's see if we can't extend one heel up from that knee. There's no rush. Let's see about the other. Might feel good to do only one at a time. So maybe you're kind of playing with that. There's a reason it's called happy baby, so do enjoy it. Now, if you're not really doing these little moves like I am, I want you to start to join because we're going to add a little more. Unlike most things, when you teach kids yoga, they do things way more fun than our serious adult yoga. So we're going to add that a little bit. We're going to do what we call swamp monsters. So when one heel comes down towards the hip, let the other leg stretch out to the side, almost up by the ear a little bit. You're going to kind of flop over. And then you're going to draw that heel in and you're going to kick the other leg out to the side and we're going to flop it over. Of course, we're taking it nice and cautious just to make sure we don't hurt ourselves. So we're really feeling that extension out of those thighs, those groin muscles, hamstrings. But we're still enjoying it. Make sure. Now, the next time that those heels melt in, take an opportunity to feel a little bit of a relax there at the back before grounding the feet. Feel that shifting in those inner thighs there. And let those knees come together. Maybe walk your feet out just to get that extra grounding at the back. Nice breath. When you're ready, just sweep again an arm off to the side. But this time we're just going to bring ourselves up and around. Once you come up, just take a moment, pause it here. And then we're going to continue around to go into our cat cow. So as we shift into our table position, remember the importance of our alignment. So the hands root, the fingerprints, the elbows are turned in. And then we're just going to give our body a little bit of movement just to loosen up throughout the shoulder. Just did a lot of movement there for our hips. Now, just a little bit about our wrists. We're just going to have a little movement there, kind of shifting the weight forward, side and back. A little circle. Keep pushing from your fingerprints. Other way when you're ready. Once you get back to there, just push up forward. Let those wrists fully relax away. Give them a little shake out. And once again, rooting them back down. So once we're into that table position, turning those elbows in, take a deep breath, looking forward. Try to draw those hips up just so we feel opened at that back before we go even further. Exhale, pushing the ground away, tuck. Remember, chin, so we can feel some of that energy coming off the shoulders. Flow with it. As we think of moving each vertebra on its own, we can also feel how the hip joints get the hinging, the shoulders. 
just waking up the front and the back of the spine. Once again, as you're ready, we're gonna shift into that neutral back. Take a look at the top of your mat. From there, we're gonna give our toes a little curl. We're gonna use our block. So bring your knees about as wide as your mat. Grab your block. You're gonna put that block in between your heels. So bring it back. And then from there, we're gonna push back. So as you walk back, lift your knees up. You're gonna to need to move your block back even further. Scoot it back there and then sit down. If you have more than one block around, maybe grab that one and scoot that under to get more. When it works, root the foot down, bring the feet about as wide as your mat. So we're in a nice garland pose. I'm just gonna turn a little bit to the sides here. So as we're in this garland pose, we're thinking of opening up to the side. Take a look, we're trying to get the knees close to alignment with our heels. We're gonna give our hips a little push forward. So we're gonna feel them guiding through the body, just like our chest is. And our shoulders, of course, they're going to go wide like we always do. And down our backs. Let's bring those elbows inside. Now we're going to slide those hands together into a nice good prayer stance so we can drop the shoulders and use that lock to help our knees stay wide so that we can guide again our hips forward. If this bothers your wrist. You can always, you know, hook one hand or go out to the side. Just again, make sure the shoulders stay away from the ears. We're kind of guiding our knees wide. Can you feel them pushing out? Even though the arms are there, we're going to kind of press them a little to the side. And then again, activate by pushing your hips forward, sitting up just a little taller. Now again, relax those shoulders. Just a little bit of bliss. We're supposed to find it in every pose. So now from here, whether you have your hands together or they're apart, Let's open them up and draw them down towards your feet. From there, you're just gonna slide over. See about bringing your left fingers towards the floor, kind of near your foot. Then inhale, your attention goes to your right. Our knees stay wide and our right arm reaches up towards the ceiling. And then nice and slow, drop it down. Try to square out your shoulders with your hips. Then the foot, hand comes down. Just tries to keep our hips a little safer. So our knees are pushing wide. So they continue to do so. We bring the left arm up. Oh, what are you feeling in that back here? We're reaching. Remember, keeping that coming out of the body. We're going to add a little more. Come down. Bring again the hand where it was. The attention goes back to the right. We reach up. Now bring your fingers towards your ears and just open like you're going to try to look behind your elbow. Turn back towards the front, drop the arm down. Root the fingers, bring your chest and your hips forward again. Let's try the other side. Left arm goes up, pull that belly button inward, bring your elbow, your hand to your ear, open that elbow, open that chest. Nice and slow, turn it back in. Open up the arms again, lift up from the chest. Maybe you choose to have your hands together at the center. You decide one more breath here. And from there, <laughs> let's relax. So it does, we're gonna use this. So let's just heel toe in a little, using our hands, heel toe in a little. <sighs> and let's scoot that block out. So lifting up, scoot the block out. And then take your legs so that they're out in front of you a little bit, just so that we can lean back and relax. Just feel your weight shifting from your hip to hip here so you can feel those legs loosening up after such a long hold. Bring your legs a little closer together and then really drop off to the side. So again, we feel that all the way in through our back. When you're ready, drop the knees to the side so we can again come around. We're going to go right into our downward dog. So bringing your legs back, remember those hands, lift up those hips. And then let's just add a little release now through the knees here. Stretch out through those heels. 
We're guiding up with our belly, shoulders relaxed into the body here. I'm gonna come into a pigeon pose. Now remember that this pose, and like any pose in yoga, can be done numerous ways. So let's see how this way works. Put your weight into your left foot. Inhale, take your right leg up to the sky. Bring your knee to your right elbow. Your foot's coming across the body and then lower that shin down towards the mat. When you're ready, we're gonna walk our left knee back and then lower the toes. Let's take a look. Is that leg straight out from that hip? Once that adjustment is there, we're gonna turn to look back towards the front of the mat again. Now, of course, we're looking for this stretch to be throughout the hip here. If it's in your knee, no matter what you do with your foot, then I want you to roll onto your back. So if you're finding it's your knee, you'll go onto your back, you'll cross your right ankle at your left knee. It's the same stretch, it's just more control, so it doesn't bother the knee. For pigeon, the toes are slightly pulled towards your shin, just keeping, again, the knee a little bit safe here. Now, if you find that you're really high off the floor, you can benefit from having the block to, again, maybe support the knee a little bit. Take another breath. Let's all reach out. No matter which variation we're in, take your breath. Let's see about creating a little more. Maybe lean forward. Maybe all the way to those forearms. Try to notice how the weight wants to shift inside of our hip. So we're guiding that left hip towards the mat. We're kind of reaching out throughout that right hip at the same time. And then of course, gravity becomes the main factor as it roots us in. Oh. Oh. I'm just looking for that breath there. Pigeon is a great opportunity to check in on the nasty thoughts of yoga. That's what I call them. Because it's amazing the things that we can, can say to ourselves during such a simple pose like pigeon. So just take another breath and notice. Feel the shoulders relax when you notice that your thoughts are just that. Breathe. Two more breaths. Now, if you are laying on your back, you're just gonna gently release your feet down to the mat and do a nice windshield wiper, just laying the knees. And then we're all gonna meet together at one point. If you were in your pigeon still, come up nice and tall, and then let's swap in to that right hip. We're gonna bring that back leg forward. So just lean over to the front so that you can bring your left leg forward, lean up, and then bring your legs out nice and long into a V sit. So pushing them out. When you do that, bring your hands behind you and guide yourself up onto your sitting bone. Make sure you don't have your arms so close, right? So the shoulders are down, the arms. We're gonna push a little out from those heels, pressing down through our sitting bone. If you feel you have the availability, see about bringing your shoulders in front of your hips. Make sure it's not the head. We want to try to keep this nice long line if we can, pushing out through those legs. Let's see, do we have a little bit more? Little press out of our heels. Think of lifting up from the head and back to the sitting bone. 
maybe even just slightly behind them. Bring your legs in. Once again, once your legs are there, give them a little bit of a sway side to side. Bring them all the way in. Once they're there again, all the way to the side, like you're showing off your bum. Sway it over, reach out of the hips a little bit. Then as you're ready, just like before, we'll bring the legs to the side, we'll sweep forward. Once you're ready, bring your legs back. Let's find our way into that downward dog. Just a nice transition space. So we're still going to think of the function of the pose, though. Fingers are rooting. Heels are chopped. Our belly is tucked. So guide your weight into that right leg. Left leg draws up. Bring that knee to the elbow. The foot tries to come across the mat, not the knee. This way, then we stay opened in those hips. Walk back. Flipping onto your back for this side, you work with your body. Check out that back leg if need be. Turning it forward. We don't want to rush it. We want to be with all of it. So we're guiding the hip down, lifting, rising with that energy through the crown of our head. Shoulders are down. Notice what's speaking here, what's showing up. Is it different maybe than that first side? Maybe if you're not using your block underneath the hip to help hold the torso, it might be a benefit to come forward and come onto the block instead of all the way down to the floor. Might be a nice journey there. Just breathe. Feel the shoulders trying to relax. Feel the hips trying to do the thing. Again, we're guiding towards that mat, reaching out from it. Maybe the breath is a little happier. Is this the harder side? Just let it go. See about relaxing the muscles on your face. I'm waiting for that inhale as we rise up. And again, if you are in your pigeon, you're just gonna roll yourself to the side. Oh, feels nice. <laughs> Maybe even reach back to help bring that leg up. And shift. Once you're ready, stretching those legs back out into a nice wide V. Don't go so wide you have no room left at the hips. It's not about doing the splits. So we root down. Give you a little shift from bum cheek to bum cheek, but never move your bum cheeks. Try not to pull them out. Back in the day, they used to get us to pull our hips out. And what we did was we actually exposed the nerves at the base of our sitting bones and it caused a lot of issues. So we, we just learned to not really do that. Although we are trying to find the sitting bones, let the body move the cushion out of the way on its own. So once again, when you're seated, push a little out from the heels. Maybe the arms are behind you. Does that help to lift you up tall? Pull that belly button in. Night before, we're gonna lean forward as far as our body goes with a flat back. Now push your legs to the ground. See if you can't bring your arms forward. Maybe only one. What communication is here? Keep grounding back. Even if you're here, you're still grounding back just as much as we're trying to root forward. There's communication going on here beyond our judgment. What do we feel in those hips? Where's the weight going? Bring your belly into the body. Now just bring one hand over towards the leg. Don't worry about which one. Bring your awareness to the opposite arm as it goes up. 
pull that belly button in. Now don't let your sitting bones leave the ground. They stay equal as we start to stretch over. Pushing up tall, the arm goes down, turn to the opposite side and we go up. There's this reach, but yet there's a rooting at the same time. Let's see, draw it down. Remember, straight arm is a great way of extending our body, but not at the expense of your shoulders. So maybe bring your hand toward your ear, still lifting through our elbows, but it's kinder on the shoulder. Up, turn a little, lengthen, continue reaching elbows, feeling that shoulder, that rib cage pulling backwards still, rounding it out, back to our center. Lifting up tall. Now let's try to really reach forward with the crown of the head. Now, again, if you need to, your hands are behind you. But if it's available, I want you to grab your block and place it out in front of you. And then bring your hands up onto the block to see if it can give you a little more of that forward sensation. You can't even fake a smile, you're too far. Another breath here. Pull that belly button in and then those hands, great support. Easy block there, come on up. Roll the shoulders back and we'll grab those legs, bring them in. Root them onto the mat again, just a little quick. As we get that grounding from there, you're gonna want your block, so grab it and then scoot down onto your back. Once onto your back, Relax the shoulders as always, nice and wide. Bring your feet up towards your hips. Pushing down into your feet, grab your block. Now, if you have two blocks, take your blocks, place one down and root your hips on top of one block to start. Deep breath at the back, relax. Bring the arms out, palms up, relax. Some days things bother you more than other days. So working with what your body is communicating with you, maybe no block is present and it's feeling good. If you're interested in exploring and you have a second block, take your second block and slide it on top of the first block. If you don't, just take your first block and see about turning it up onto the second setting and grounding the hips again. Take your time to find the space for it closer to the bum than you might think. And that way then we get a rooting, not necessarily a bend. Give the head a little bit of a draw side to side, just feeling that ear come gently away from the top of the shoulder. And then relax again. With the next inhale, press into those feet and lift your hips just enough to be able to scoot your block, blocks out. Grounding the hips down onto the mat. We'll get this beautiful sensation of flat. Bring your legs in and then up. Now, just a little bit of a movement at the ankle and then bring your feet out and try to find this spot where your legs are just simply on top of the hips. The shoulders drop, they're nice and wide like always. The arms are gonna do the same. They're gonna go up, and then we're gonna think of those far corners of our shoulders. Nice wide corners, 
rooting through the mouth. Fingers are relaxed, our wrists. We're searching for this balance in gravity here. Having one of those days where you feel like your toes are filled with bricks. Observe. With each exhale, we ground out wider. Almost as if our legs are rooting in deeper, our arms. Keep with the sensation of still and quiet as you slowly let the arms and the legs melt in. And down. 